Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the Xiaomi Media, aka the Xiaomi Sphere, aka how I made the last two videos on my channel. Now it seems like Xiaomi don't know themselves what to call this camera yet. However, I have been interested in the idea of putting a 360 degree camera on a drone since I started flying them. So when I saw this camera, I jumped at the chance of trying it. So first of all, I want to thank everyone for watching the last two videos on the channel, despite me not really explaining what was going on. But I want to state that it wasn't my intention to look like a magician or some kind of wizard, but I quickly realized that it came across as that when viewing the videos without any context. The truth is, though, that I have spent the last couple of days figuring out the camera, and the videos that I posted were just a result of me figuring it all out. I have to say though that it really did cheer me up reading the comments and theories of what was going on. There were some really elaborate theories and I'm afraid when you see how it's done you might be pretty disappointed. So there's no CGI, there's no blue screens and I'm not a wizard. The only thing I used was this camera mounted on my ZMR 250. So as I say, this is the Xiaomi Media, but it's also being dubbed as the Sphere because Xiaomi have other products with the Media name and the accompanying software it comes with addresses it as the Xiaomi Sphere. So it's a 360 degree consumer camera and its main competitor is the Samsung Gear 360. Now, I don't have a Gear 360 myself, but I think there are a few things with the Xiaomi that are better specifically for mounting it on a drone. So if you want to see a comparison of the Samsung Gear against the Xiaomi, then go and check out a channel called 360 Rumors. And he also has a blog as well. His name is Mick. And he has done a comprehensive comparison between the Xiaomi and the Gear 360. So, rather than make you watch the entire video to explain how it works, I'll give you a short version and then I will elaborate on that. So, the short version is that there are two 190 degree cameras that sit back to back and the free accompanying software allows you to stitch those videos together to give a combined resolution of 3456 by 1728 which is just short of 4K. The camera has a built-in accelerometer and I think this is the part that's going to interest you the most and that records the camera's position as metadata within the saved mp4 video file this then allows the software to manipulate the camera angle to any position that it likes and therefore it can stabilize itself using that information and that is how the first video was uploaded so technically you can tell the app to ignore the metadata so the camera position is then fixed and that is how the second video was uploaded. Now I didn't upload either video in the 360 degree format yet and I'll give more details on that later. Instead I used GoPro's 360 degree viewer and panned around the scene myself and then recorded the footage on screen using a screen recorder and that is called OBS, that piece of software. So I will be uploading the actual 360 degree videos for you to watch and pan around yourself and those will be in the description of this video. The reason I didn't do that in the first place is due to the nature of 360 video itself and that is where the technical part of this review is going to start. So if you don't want to go any further than that then this is your time to stop watching. So as I mentioned earlier the camera outputs a high resolution 
of nearly 4K and for 360 videos it needs to do this as a minimum to get a high enough quality. See the idea is that each 16 by 9 portion we are looking at in the viewer needs to be in 1080p ideally. Now you don't quite get that with the Xiaomi but I think it strikes a nice balance between quality and practical use. So what do I mean by that? Well, you see 4K video takes up a lot of processing power as well as bandwidth and I only just feel like technology is catching up to that. So then when you throw in a third element of smooth panning around inside that 360 space as well as streaming it off the internet then all of a sudden to do this sort of thing we need a fast computer and a really fast internet connection to get a good experience out of it. Now my first time viewing a 360 video was a vlogger named Fum Falui. He is from the UK and he took I think it was about eight GoPros and put them in a special mount. It might have been 3D printed I think and then he stitched the images or video should I say together to give an impressive result the thing is though his medium is YouTube the same as me so a lot of that quality is lost once it's uploaded to YouTube it's almost like we need a system that only streams the part of the video that we're currently looking at and I have absolutely no idea how that would work but I guess kind of similar to how Google Earth works currently with its satellite images so spending $5,000 on a GoPro rig wasn't an option for me. I did consider trying a mount for the Yi camera as I have enough Yi cameras to make it up but then we still have the problem of mounting at least four Yi cameras onto a mini quad which is also not viable so I put that project on the later base. So as I say I will put a link in the description to the original 360 videos so you can pan around yourself but to get the quality that I was getting you will need to view them in 4K otherwise if you view them in 1080p or lower then you're actually viewing each section in 16 by 9 at about 240p and the video will look like any other 360 experience out there on YouTube probably. So let's talk a little more about the camera. We of course know Xiaomi for their famous Yicam range. It's very popular in the quadcopter community. And they also produce the Mi Drone as well, which is one of my favorite products. We have three buttons on the top of the camera. The first one is the power button, which requires a long press. The second is the Wi-Fi button to transfer the recorded files to your phone. And the third starts and stops recording. Once the camera is switched on the power button then cycles between photo and video mode and if you want to do photos with this camera actually does 7k resolution for those. We also have an indicator on the front to show which mode it's in as well as a battery indicator which will go red when the charging starts and will also go red when the battery is getting low. So speaking of the battery, it's got a 1600 milliamp Lion battery that gives you about an hour's worth of recording which isn't bad at all. It's using a Umbrella A12 chipset for all of that processing and the camera sensors are a IMX 206 16 megapixel sensor. The camera does get pretty hot while it's recording which I guess is a result of all that processing. The camera also has a stereo mic which has two inlets on the top. So onto the side of the camera and there is a pull out tab that reveals a micro USB connector and that is for charging. The camera does support quick charge 2.0 and it also acts as a mass storage device when plugged into a PC for the SD card which is next to it. So the camera will take up to a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. You don't get given one in the package so I'm using a 64 gig class 10 card here. The tab does also have a rubber seal on it which makes the camera splash proof and dust proof 
and it's got a rating of IP67 if you're interested in that sort of thing. So on the underneath we have a standard tripod mount and this is how I connected it to my quadcopter which I'll show you later. There's also some charging contacts for a future charging device as well as a speaker for its built-in beeper. So this isn't a speaker for video playback, the camera just beeps when you press the buttons on it. There's also some locking holes underneath if you are using a full-size tripod, which is quite nice. And speaking of tripods, the camera comes with this device, which I have not used, but it's a handle for doing vlogging with, and it also doubles up as a tripod as well. And you are also given a nice pouch for the camera, a USB micro lead, and you're given a manual which of course is all in Chinese. I actually use the Google Translate app to translate all of these images into English and there is nothing that you won't learn from this video. So next let me show you how I have connected it to my ZMR250. As I mentioned before I have used the tripod mounting system and there are two options for mounting it to a quadcopter in my opinion. Now it clearly isn't designed to fit a drone that is for sure but I'm hoping that if I demonstrate the camera in this way then Xiaomi will come up with a better form factor for us or another company that can do this sort of thing because after all FPV came from the CCTV industry so if this sort of thing interests you then please give this video a share or a like to get the message out there because I think it's a really cool thing to do. So the two options were to mount the camera facing forward like I have done which did worry me a bit at first because it kind of acts like a big air brake or the other option was to mount it on its side. I went with forward facing for one reason and that is because despite this being a very good 360 degree camera there is still a gap between the two camera sensors and no matter how good the software stitches the two videos together neither of the cameras can capture this 10 millimeter gap here and therefore you do see where the video joins. The join can only be seen at the bottom of the image as the field of view of each camera is 190 degrees so that means that at the extreme edges of the field of view the camera's images do actually overlap which means they can be stitched to 180 degrees each making up the 360 degree image but like I say towards the bottom and top of the image you can see the overlap so if I mounted the cameras on the side it would be aerodynamically better but a lot of the time I found myself looking either forward or backwards at the quadcopter in the viewer and in the end mounting the camera face on didn't actually affect how the quadcopter flew at all but doing this did mean that some of the props and front arms were cut out of the image. So I used the ZMR for a couple of reasons. The first is that it's very powerful and can easily carry the weight of the camera. In fact, the camera only weighs just over 100 grams anyway. So despite its form factor, it's not actually that much heavier than a GoPro. And the ZMR also has this vibration dampened mount as well that lifts the camera slightly above so we can see more of the quadcopter. The downside of that of course is that it's mounted on these rubber grommets which have a tendency to come out under load. These ones are pretty strong though but I used some cable ties to ensure that gravity didn't yank them out and that did seem to work fine. And I also know what you're thinking, yes this system is completely exposed to crashes and would probably ruin the camera in a crash. The best case scenario would be that in a crash the cable ties would snap and the rubber mounts would lift out but it was still a big risk flying it like this. This is why I also mounted the battery above despite it obstructing some of the camera's view because a bottom mounted battery would more likely topple the aircraft over on a landing and I didn't want that either. Other than that the ZMR's mount has a perfectly sized hole up the front to fit a tripod screw and bolts through which I made sure was as tight as it would go and that is it as far as the mounting goes. 
Now, it was my plan to fly around slowly, but as soon as I got in the air and realized that the quad flew fine, I was doing my usual 100 meter dives, flips, rolls, just like I usually do. Again, it was a bit of a risk, but I think it paid off. So, how does all of this work? software-wise, well, in true Xiaomi fashion, they have again released an amazing bit of hardware, but before the software is really ready for proper use. So this happened with the Mi Drone as well. They released the Mi Drone and the app was all in Chinese and it didn't work right. It was buggy, it was limited, but after a few firmware updates and a lot of work, it became a near perfect product. And I'm hoping that is gonna be the case with this camera. Now, as a few people said in the comments, the footage looks groundbreaking and I thought it looked pretty good as well, but the app does all of the work and it's Android based only. Now there is an iPhone app, but it's way behind the Android version and it only outputs the video files at 5 megabit, which is nowhere near good enough for a 4K image and compared to the Android's output, that is 40 megabit. So the iOS version at the moment is not worth looking at at all. There's no PC app at all, so you have to have a relatively recent Android device to cope with the processing power. I'm using a Google Pixel XL, and that has got one of the latest processors in it. I've also tested this out on a Sony Xperia Z3 tablet, and that one just about copes with it as well, but my old 2013 Nexus 5, it crashes and it overheats and it doesn't save the file. So, just like with the Mi Drone at first, you get the app from a QR code that comes written on the Chinese instructions. This then directs the Android device to a Chinese website to download an APK, so you have to make sure that you have install foreign firmware, software, whatever enabled on your Android device. And on Apple, when you scan the QR code, it takes you to the Apple Store to download it from. So the app is called the Xiaomi Sphere, and it's actually in English, and it works okay, but some of the functions are buggy. Okay, so this is what the app looks like. So of course you need to turn the camera on first of all and then press the Wi-Fi button and wait for that to produce a signal and then go into the Wi-Fi settings on your phone and select the MJXJ005635 or whatever it's called on your device and connect to it. Now it does have a password and that password is 1 to 8. I just had to play around with various different passwords until something started to work. So now that is connected, it'll come up with that error that says that there's no internet connection. You have to accept that and swipe it, otherwise it won't work. And then if we go back into the Sphere app, then I can press the camera button and I'll be able to connect to the camera then and we should be able to see what the camera is viewing now of course I didn't use this at all for what I was doing because I just set the camera up and set it recording and that may take some time there you go it's loaded so you can see I can actually use the phone's gyro to move around and also if I tap on the screen I can also move around but like I say I didn't use this feature at all as you can see, no wizardry, it just works on the app there. And of course we can start video recording here by pressing the record button. We can switch and take a photo there. We can also do some time lapse options which I didn't use. You can also see the camera's power as well which is quite nice. And then we have some settings at the top which we'll just run through. So we can change the resolution of the video there. So I've got it set to the highest at 30 frames per second but we can also have a slightly lower resolution at 60 frames per second if that interesting for you but in this scenario when it comes to 360 you want the highest resolution rather than frames per second really and then we have got the white balance which is currently set to auto you can change that we've also got exposure compensation as well so that's pretty cool for the video so we can have the recording on a cycle and then we've got the resolution of the photos here as well so you can see there it does 619 by 3456 which is a high resolution and then you can also change that to a lower resolution as well if you like and then we've got more options if you want to take a photo so again we've got white balance but we can change the ISO value the exposure time as well and again we've got exposure compensation 
So we have Wi-Fi settings, so you can change the name of the device and also the password. You can format the SD card from here. Preview mode, it's currently set to mirrorball, but I'll take you through the different preview modes in a minute. So we can have it turn off automatically. You can change the times for that, so 10 minutes or 5 minutes. And then we can turn the buzzer on and off as well, so that's just the little noise that it makes as you go through the options. And there's an LED light on the front of the camera, you can turn that off if you want to as well. You can turn the camera off from here too if you like. And then the rest of the stuff is just regarding the firmware and the device name, restoring settings, etc. So if I go back here now, I can actually access the camera's video files. So if I press this button here, then we can go into there. Now you can see we've got two options here. We've got camera and then we have got local. Now this is where the app is a pain, right? In order to save the files so that they're in a format that can go on a computer, like say for a VR viewer or for YouTube, you have to download them to your phone. So if I just select this one here, for example, so this is the first video that I uploaded, and then we have some options down here, and see where it says mirrorball there? That's just different variations of zoom. So we have little planet there, and all it's doing is just zooming in now. It's not really doing anything really. And then this is the panoramic view that we want to save but changing that option doesn't actually do anything there oh by the way we can also have it vr as well so if you want to stick your phone in some vr goggles then you can have 360 view in vr i guess that's nice but i haven't tried that out yet so you are given an option to then download it to the phone and that is what you have to do and that does that over Wi-Fi and then that sends that over to this local option then so if I just press local there at the top so it takes some time to download over Wi-Fi so what you can do is take the SD card out of the camera, put it in a computer, and then copy it over to your phone. It's a little bit quicker. There's a folder, I think it's called MAD360, MADV360, something like that. You can copy the file over, and then that will go into your local folder. If not, you can actually import it as well as like an import button at the top there. So these are the videos that I have downloaded and then this is where you can go in and save them into a format for a computer because if you take them directly from the SD card then they're not stitched together. They're just like two massive round videos and it's the software and the phone that stitches them together so if I say go into the first video that I did so this is the first video that I uploaded and you will notice there that the camera position is fixed and then if I just pause that for a second we have some options at the bottom here and this is where the app is buggy so if I press more here you can see there that it says gyro calibration now when you tick that it turns the gyro on and that is when you saw the stabilized view so if I press play now I don't know how that's gonna come over on the phone also I want to change it to a flatter image that's when it's gonna loop around the camera etc anyway I don't know how that's gonna come out on the screen recorder so I'm just gonna stop that but you can't turn that off when it saves the file to the computer which is a shame you can on the version of the app before this but you can't download that because the app updates itself so here even though I can turn off gyro calibration when you save it and I'll show you how to do that in a minute when you save it then it still exports with the stabilized version so what I did to get a unstabilized version is I contacted Mick from Rumors360 and he had the old version of the app that didn't support this gyro calibration yet and that is how I exported the second video with the gyro turned off. This is something that Xiaomi need to fix. It needs to be when you press this button here it turns off the metadata for the gyro so you can pick between either having the footage stabilized or having the camera fixed 
because I like both of those options. So at the moment with this version of the app, we are stuck with having the gyro turned on when the file is saved. So how do we save it? Well, you have to go into the editor. So if I press edit there, you can cut the video shorter if you want. However, you just want to do that on a computer. So I used Premiere to do that. So if I pause that there, so you can add a filter if you want, but I didn't do any of that because you want to do all of that in post. You can add music again. You don't want to do any of that in my opinion. And you can change the view, but that doesn't affect the outcome of the video. So it's going to output as a panoramic video ready for a VR player such as the GoPro player or put it into YouTube but you have to use YouTube's metadata importer it's another application that is so that YouTube knows that it's a 360 video you literally just click on the file and it imports the metadata it saves a new file and then YouTube knows that it's a 360 video so how do we export this in a format that we can then import the metadata to it really should import it from the app and again that is something they need to improve but you see where it says save at the top here if I press save and then it's going to say exporting and this is where you need a fast device because it's going to take some time to export for these five minute files it's probably going to take me about 15 minutes for it to export which isn't too bad but I think if you had a slower device then it's going to take much longer and then I can then move that file onto the computer and edit it in Premiere and like I say add the metadata for YouTube as well. So there you go, there is my review of the Xiaomi Media or Sphere 360 camera and also how I put it on my quadcopter as well. I think the hardware is absolutely fantastic. They just need to improve the software. We need a PC app first of all because people doing this sort of thing are going to want to manipulate it on a PC. There are various plugins that you can install on Premiere, for example, so that you can put text in 360 and stuff like that. There's a bundle called Skybox, which you can mess around with, so I might have a play with that. One thing I thought was great was the audio of this thing, and also the picture quality is great as well. I'm looking forward to updates. I really do hope they put updates in there, and I think if the software can get improved then I think this will be a winner for getting some great shots. So I'll put a link in the description if you wish to buy one of these and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe. Cheers!